On your magical journey across the dark lands called the internet, you are more than likely to have heard the term cloud computing a lot. What is this cloud computing and is it indeed affected by rain? Let's figure that out today. Before we dive in, let's have a look at what cloud computing is. Simply put, cloud computing is the delivery of computing services, stuff like servers, storage, databases, and much more over the internet. When we use the internet to achieve this task, we call it using the cloud. Using a cloud means simply using the internet. All right, now that we have that out of the way, let's dig in. Any cloud or internet delivery system is defined by two key parts, the deployment model and the service model. These two come together to define the accessibility and the functionality of the cloud. Let's have a look at what the deployment model is first. The deployment model, as you might guess from the name, defines who the cloud system is deployed to. That means it tells the cloud who can access it and who can't. Based on the deployment model, any cloud can be called one of three types, a public cloud, a private cloud, or a hybrid cloud. A public cloud is one that's, well, public. It's available to anyone using the internet and needs cloud-based solutions like servers or storage. Public clouds are usually cheap and very easy to buy because it's the service provider who's handling all the work behind the scenes. Some really popular examples of public clouds are Microsoft's Azure and Amazon's AWS. A private cloud is a cloud that only certain people can access. If your local library stores its databases and records online, it's using a private cloud, since only people like the librarians and staff can access them. They're usually more on the expensive side, since it's the client doing all the setup work. A hybrid cloud is like a mix and mash of public and private clouds. I like to use the example of Google Drive for hybrid clouds. You have your own little private cloud in a massive mess of private clouds that just come together to form a public cloud that anyone can use. Think of it as like a hotel, where you can buy a room as you need in a building that's pretty much open to the general public. With that, we'll wrap up our deployment models. Now we head into service models, which are ever so slightly more complicated than the deployment models. The service model of a cloud basically tells the cloud what its job is and what it's supposed to do. This job is defined by what we call the XAAS structure. It's short for X as a service or something as a service. So what exactly is this something? That something is one of three things, infrastructure, software, or platform. In infrastructure as a service, the provider gives you the infrastructure you need to work with. That means access to servers, storage, and networking hardware. In software as a service, the provider hosts everything from the infrastructure to the applications and their management. You simply act as an end user to what the provider has to offer. For example, most popular email services are SAAS models since they offer something and you use it. In platform as a service, the provider gives you a platform to develop and maintain your applications. That includes useful stuff like a unified management platform, analytics tools, and much more. If you had a hard time understanding that, don't worry. The XAAS model is actually pretty much like ordering pizza. How? In infrastructure as a service, you're taking home frozen pizza. The provider gives you everything you need like cheese, bread, and sauce, but you have to work yourself to make the pizza. In platform as a service, you're not even making the pizza. You're just ordering from home delivery, as the provider sends everything ready for you to eat at home. In software as a service, you go a step further and eat at their restaurant, meaning that the only thing you have to do is provide the money, and the restaurant will handle everything for you, from making the pizza to serving it. That should cover up the basics for the service model in cloud computing. With that, we're pretty much past the basics. If you want to go ahead in this field, there's still a lot more to explore. Stuff like cloud security and implementation is a great next step that you can take if you're interested. 
we'll finish off here. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. This is Savi from studytonight.com and I wish you good luck on your journeys.